Hello? Just kidding, that's not how you answer this thing. The Fold 5 is a phone that changed my perspective on a lot of things. How your workflow can change as a result of a much, much larger display, how Samsung has taken leaps over the years to the point where the typical iPhone user can appreciate a phone like this, and just how far foldables have come over the years. This is the Fold 5 one month later. So I started writing this review on day one with the Fold because I thought it was important to capture that thought process, sure the obvious, switching from the iPhone 13 mini to an Android, but then remove that aspect. You're getting a drastically different form factor, the irregular tall shaped outer display which we'll get to later, and the massive unfolded 7.6 inch display. The first thing I noticed on the very first day unfolding this phone was how I had to rethink the use of my phone. The dual displays in varying sizes means that every app that you open becomes a question of, is it better to use open or closed on the cover screen? The general answer quickly becomes, how fast is the action that I'm doing? And am I quickly viewing notifications, responding to a text, or am I diving deeper into content that requires flipping open to view on the big screen? I would also add that my second criteria is, does this content require a lot of scrolling, where the taller display would allow me to see more at a glance, and the third most problematic criteria, is the app even supported properly on the inner display? Something we'll touch on a little bit later. So this question of how should I use my phone, although exhausting for that first week, is the most excitement that I've experienced with a phone since the original iPhone. A reminder that in a world of repetitive candy bar phone designs, innovation is sparking again. So what does it actually do differently with a Fold versus a typical phone? And not the gimmicky stuff, but the real everyday stuff. The multitasking is the first real use case here. There's something magical about launching an app, having a consistent dock at the bottom where you can drag into multitasking view and just keep adding more and more windows beside or on top of that. I can't tell you how many times on my last phone I wouldn't do tasks that required flipping through apps back and forth and the breath of fresh air that Samsung provided by putting apps side by side. True multitasking. But back to that question of where should I use this app? You can imagine it gets exhausting at the beginning as you question every single interaction and workflow, but slowly transitions to natural and useful with Samsung giving helpful shortcuts, like pinning frequently split-screened apps together on the home screen so they always launch together. Now every phone has drawbacks and it's naive to say that they don't. And the major one here, of course, is that crease that's driving through the middle of your screen. There's no denying it's there, you feel it when you use the phone, you see it outdoors or in off light, and I've tested both the Flip and the Fold series. Obviously the Flip had the horizontal line passing through that you feel every single time you're scrolling, and then the Fold has one running vertically, meaning the amount of times you actually swipe across it are minimal as you usually swipe on one side of the display. And one incredibly cool thing that I didn't expect and I can't really show on camera is that when you look at the display head on in good lighting, like indoor lighting, the crease becomes completely invisible. It's actually not what I expected at all. This obviously only applied to looking head-on in the right light, but it's a cool achievement for Samsung to make here to make it more tolerable than you'd expect. Then as you fold the screen, you'll notice that it's way more premium feeling than last year's generation. So not only is it very slim on the hinge, but it provides no gap when closed, or at least a very minimal gap. In my testing, dust did get into the display, but certainly nothing big enough to cause damage to the screen. Samsung has become a leader in the foldable game since the first generation of the Fold, and they've made their stance clear with the Fold 5 with a lot of thoughtful features that I want to talk about here. So having two screens means completely changing the layout from one to another. Google's Pixel Fold makes you mirror the same home screen between both screens, but Samsung acknowledged that both screens have different use cases and includes the ability to either mirror or have completely different layouts, so the apps and widgets on your cover screen can be completely different than what's on the inside display. And even the app drawer can be organized in a different order. Battery life was absolutely mastered on this thing, and obviously this is subjective on how you actually use your phone, but as an average user who watches YouTube, browses the web, makes calls, I was able to get 1.5 to two days of battery life consistently over a month. It's wild to see that battery life, and I also didn't do things like make the wallpaper black to save energy or turn off the 120 hertz display. So technically, you could squeeze a little more battery life out here than I did, but what I've seen is incredible. So when I get an Android device, specifically a Samsung, the first thing I do most of the time is disable Samsung's apps and then switch to Google. But the Fold really showed me how Samsung One UI has silently gotten incredible over the past few years. And it's not just me saying that, 
Throughout half of this time with this phone, I used Google's apps and I'm so glad I did it this way. Then I switched to Samsung and loved this phone so much more. The consistent and clean design, the optimization for the foldable display, even the browser allowing you to customize and pull the search bar down to the bottom. So many thoughtful things that made it 10 times more enjoyable than with Google's own apps and that really surprised me. I've never said that before. Also, this review didn't have time to include it, but Samsung DeX lets you plug in your phone to a monitor and essentially transform into a desktop experience that is phenomenal on this phone. Essentially, this phone lets you use a traditional smartphone experience the tablet experience, and then the desktop experience running from one device. It's absolutely incredible. You know, no other phone lets you use your phone in all of these different ways. It's just so cool to see. Now, throughout my testing, I couldn't ignore some of the things that Samsung still hasn't fixed over these years. Number one, in the side button of the phone. You are able to customize it, but yet again, there's no easy way of setting to Google Assistant. You're forced to use Bixby or a custom action but never Google, which just seems bizarre to me. Like, why would they do that? The next is the location of the speakers, which is the top and the bottom of the front panel. These speakers work great when closed, but then when you open the display, you're now only getting audio on the left side of the tablet display, which is really irritating. Sure, there's a case to be made about simply just rotating the display, but I just feel like it's not a good experience when you're essentially forced to. Plus, when rotated, I was often covering the speakers with my hands, which made it really frustrating to use without headphones. Let me know if you have a Fold 5 and if this has bothered you because I haven't heard anybody else complain about this yet. And the last problem is probably the most obvious downfall in general, the screen size of the displays. The cover screen is abnormally tall and thin. This means es essentially that anything you rotate is a bizarre experience, and then over time it bothered me less as I got used to it, but I really feel like it's just not the right size for anything. The inside display could also be more effective in a better landscape layout, like most other foldables on the market. And in an attempt to set themselves apart, I still don't understand the choice in making that screen size what it is. And this wouldn't truly be a review on this channel without at least briefly mentioning the switch from iPhone to Android. You get a phone that breaks free of the Apple ecosystem where you can customize everything down to how your notifications appear, how transparent your widgets are, how each of your home screens and lock screens look, all of these things that you're praying that Apple will update for you every three to five years and then hoping that they'll do it in the way that you want. I've had so much fun customizing my phone and being reminded of how many choices Apple locks you into. While it brings you the simplicity of iPhone, it loses the creativity that Samsung is giving here. And if you're looking to switch from iPhone, here's what I did to make it easier. Contacts were migrated from my Google account, iCloud calendars turned on sharing and then synced to a Gmail account. Reminders and notes, I use TickTick across both platforms, which I highly recommend, especially if you jump between iOS and Android like I do. Then location sharing, I now use Google Maps instead of Find My. This all made the process really easy to migrate. So I've been using the phone for a month. And the one question a lot of skeptics still have is, are foldables really the future? And to answer that, when I got this phone, I quickly thought it was only for people who spend a lot of time independently on their phone, you know, doing a lot of gaming or watching Netflix, neither of which I really do all that much on my phone. But over the month, I started to realize how much more you can do on your phone when multitasking with it. There's a lot of tasks I would often put off with any other phone until I was near a computer. And the sigh of relief that I could unfold this display and have apps side by side was just incredible. So now I think the answer is almost anyone could love and embrace the foldable. The only concern is if people are willing to spend the cost of this phone. And if Samsung could start to knock the price down on the foldable market, this could be one of the best phones by a landslide.